Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello and welcome to episode number 33 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco, the Knife Junkie. Welcome to the show. Welcome to an interesting one today. We've got uh, Father's Day coming up. But it's not your traditional Father's Day knife show that we're going to talk about. No, Bob's got a little something special planned for that. But first, I do want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash knifejunkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle. Maybe you've got an MP3 player. Again, simply go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie and you can get that free audio book download and 30 day free trial just for being a knife junkie podcast listener. So Father's Day, Bob, you and I both dads, uh, hopefully yep. uh, significant others or kids or whatever may be listening to this episode. So uh, yeah. a little something different Father's Day related for knives. Well, here's the thing, Jim. Uh, I am so easy to shop for. I don't know anyone who is <laughs> as easy to shop for uh, nice. as I am. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. Does right. it have an edge? Is it metallic? It doesn't even have to be out of metal now. I'll right. take it. Uh, but uh, inevitably, uh, the question comes up, what do you want for this? What do you want for your birthday? What do you want for? Mm. Just get me a knife or a watch. Mm. You know, I like watches, too. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, uh, too. but, but uh, you know, really, you know, my ETA is knives. So, Get me a knife, please. But I'm sure they I'm sure they need a little more specifics, though. Well, yeah, exactly. And so now that I know my wife does listen to this show on um, occasion. Hi, Mrs. Uh, knife Junkie. <laughs> I'm putting this out there uh, as a subtle uh, sort of buying guide. Uh, but this is a fantasy, uh, fantasy Father's Day knife list. Hmm. And uh, I have a couple of stipulations. Um, they have to be production knives because... Uh, custom knives, that's a, that's a whole nother deep hole you could go down and I'm not prepared right. to do that. But, uh, so it has to be a production knife that I don't have. In other words, it can't be a double of something that I already have in a different steel. And, uh, on this list, money is no issue. Oh, well, that's really not, that's really nice of you to Isn't do that. that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to put limitations. Don't want to hinder the, the gift givers. Yeah. Hinder. He said hinder. That oh. will come up later. Hinderer. <laughs> will come up later. Anyway, uh, so yeah, production knives that I don't have, money is not an issue. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, the most popular uh, category of, uh, of knife these days is the EDC folder. So that's where I'm going to start. And, and I'll tell you how I define the every, everyday carry folder. My everyday carry folder has to be large and tactical. So I am going to call the, the regular EDC folder a three and one quarter inch or less non-tactical sort of locking folder. And since money is no issue, it gets a little spicy here. Anyway, I, I'm going to start. But the one that I would choose, if if I could uh, choose any right now, it would be the Hogue Ritter RSK Mark One. And actually, I think it's slightly over three and a quarter inch blade size. Uh, but but it is the the current version of the vaunted Ritter Griptilian, now made by Hogue uh, to exacting standards. They're, they're, they do everything in-house. And uh, it's running on a platform that uh, locks up with their Able lock, which is a ever so slightly uh, improved Benchmade access lock. So since it's in limited production and you can't find them anywhere, I would say, honey, if you can find the Hogue Ritter RSK Mark I or the new Ritter Griptilian, mm-hmm. snatch it up for me. I'll take it. You said it's uh, limited availability. So what, where would one go to try to even find one? It's not like you can just well, you know, go to the corner store. This this one, I think right now at the moment, you know, I'm on I'm on a pre pre uh, what do you call it? The pre-order uh, pre-order sure. when it when it comes back online because uh, it's in limited production. But it is a production knife. So you would have to find this on the secondary market. Someone selling it on blade forums or something no, okay. like that. Okay. Now, uh, I, I don't want to just stop right there. Uh, I want to give you my my three runners up. And uh, uh, so since, again, money is no issue, I would get the Pena Lanny's Clip uh, made mm. by Riot. Riot knives. Okay, so let me tell you what the Lanny's Clip. A Lanny's Clip is a traditional knife pattern. Uh, it, it's a clip point blade. It's a beautiful uh, 
uh, it's a beautifully shaped uh, blade. And a lot of knife makers use that pattern, the Lanny's clip, as a, a, a pattern to sort of show off their talents, sort of like industrial designers make their signature chair. The Lanny's clip is often uh, a, a knife that uh, knife makers will show off their skills with. Uh, the Pena, Enrique Pena, who's uh, been making slip joints for years, custom slip joints, and has uh, recently moved into the locking uh, knife arena, has created a, a modern locking version of the Lanny's clip and Riot uh, knives out of China. Uh, builds it and it is beautiful. It's outstanding. It's a uh, the one that I like is the recurved tanto with the with the hollow grind. You know what I'm talking about. Are your eyes glazing over, Jim? Because <laughs> you should be writing this down, right? Oh yes, for absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm not buying it for you, so oh, I didn't have to write that one down. <laughs> all right. So uh, I would also get the Spiderco Drunken, which is a Sinkovitz de design. Ooh. Very very cool. Looks kind of like that. Name, yeah, at least <laughs> it it is it is a beautiful knife and it has these drunken wavy patterns uh, oh. inscribed on the handle i thought it was like a knife you'd go out drinking with well i i you know <laughs> i i think that's uh good yeah exactly uh and then the third would be the we uh elijah isham pleroma we had elijah on the show right. a couple of weeks ago and uh, the pleroma is his locking version of the swayback jack which is mm -hmm. the curved blade handle okay. beautiful that's, knife that's a pretty good list pretty yeah good list. so but but at the top would be that the hogue ritter grip for sure right just in case mrs knife junkie missed it the first time yeah yeah, yeah or the second or third <laughs> right. but but this is not just a selfish selfish show not for you to drop no, hints. This no. is really a... This is to give other people selfish ideas. Yeah, a, a good chance to uh, get some exposure to some knives that uh, maybe we haven't talked about in in the past podcast. Exactly. A few that we have, but some others as well. So, Well, it's because I don't have these knives, and I really want these knives that, <laughs> that we're talking about them. And uh, uh, because they all have something that, uh, with, without ever having held any of them, uh, just has something very compelling to me. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to go to the tactical folders next. And that's, that's basically to me three and a half and above, uh, in terms of blade length. Mm. And my winner, uh, this is a knife I've been, I've spoken about. I spoke about it with a, a number of guests recently is the Riot Crossroads, another, uh, Riot knife, uh, Riot knives produced knife. Uh, out of China. Uh, it's a Kirby Lambert design. He's a custom knife maker who, whose designs have always resonated with me. Uh, this crossroads is a beautifully subtle clip point design. It's, it's sort of tactical, sort of dressy. It's got a bolster. Uh, the version I, uh, like has, uh, marbled, uh, carbon fiber and, uh, it, it's a Riyadh. So it's outstanding in terms of fit and finish and, and how it's put together. Mm -hmm. So that would be my number one. I do have runners up. I would get a Strider SNG. I used to have a Strider. I got rid of it. And now they're so expensive. I just don't see myself buying one because they're, I want it just for the collection. Let me put it that way. I'm not crazy about carrying or using them, but I just think they're cool. Uh, the Hinderer Maximus, uh, the only folding dagger I can think of, uh, that's a full on dagger with both sides sharpened. And you know, I'm a, a huge Hinderer fan, but again, that's a huge price tag. Uh, but then again, Money is no issue. Uh, and the last one is the brand new version, uh, the brand new, what do you want to call it, iteration of the Liang Ma Eraser, uh, which has been produced by a number of different uh, custom makers and probably most famously by Columbia River Knife and Tool. The new one is a uh, is also a Riot produced knife, and it's just cool. I don't know. It's It's got a four-inch blade, which, you know, I'm a sucker for, a, for the long four-inch blade. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's a mix between an assassin's knife and a chef's knife, and oh. uh, I don't know. It's it's very yeah. appealing, yeah. Uh, but but the winner of this uh, tactical category would definitely be the Kirby Lambert designed Riot produced Crossroads. Okay, and, and if you're listening with the marble carbon fiber, okay, <laughs> let's let's get it right here. <laughs> Again, we're doing a, a fantasy Father's Day knife list. Uh, production knives that Bob doesn't have, and money is no issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't set up the categories really well, but we've covered EDC folder and tactical folder. Uh, Bob, you are also got a few other categories here I'm going to run down just to kind of give a preview. Hmm. Uh, automatic out the front as well as side opening. You've got fixed combat, fixed camp, slip joint, machete, and custom. 
So uh, several more categories to cover. So they should be a lot of choices for people to uh, to get for dads or brothers or sons or, or whatever the, the Father's Day gift uh, that they want to get. So next is the uh, out the front automatic. And uh, there are not too many companies that make them. So, I mean, my answer is probably going to be somewhat obvious, but I would choose a Microtech. And to me, it's the Combat Troodon all the way. It's got a 3.8 inch dagger. Uh, the handle is on the bias, so it just looks different from any other uh, any other there um, out, out the front. And I'm talking about the angle of the of the uh, of the hilt. And uh, so it's a it's obviously a, it's the size that I'm going for, and also the aesthetics. And uh, and again, give me that dagger blade. You can get the combat throw down in, in a number of different blade configurations, but mm. any opportunity to get two edges, I say go for it. Right. <laughs> I, you know, that's uh, honestly that's one I have not heard you talk about. Not not only not only on the podcast, but just in our normal conversations, you know, talking about knives. So yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it it's it's kind of a touchy subject uh, in our municipality, you know. So it's not something mm-hmm. that I that I gravitate towards too much because I, you know, it's not something um, that's that's uh, endorsed in our area. So oh. um, I got to be careful about that. But I can have it in the house, and if <laughs> I were to if I were to spend four hundred dollars on something that I just have in the house, the Microdeck Troodon would be awesome. And, you know, Microtech is, has been making their knives now in, in, um, they've brought back bright colors. Uh, for a while they were, they were in the, the anodized black olive drab and tan sort of military thing. And, uh, so they, they've recently been anodizing their amazing tactical knives in purple and pink and green and blue. And they're very cheerful, mm-hmm. cheerful tactical knives. So two other, uh, two other, um, what do you call it? Uh, also rands here would be the heretic manticore. That's also a, an out the front that you can get in a variety of cool blade shapes, recurves and, and tantos and, and daggers. Also, uh, that company heretic knives is, uh, is run by the, by the son of uh, Anthony Marfione, I believe, who is the guy who, uh, who runs Microtech. And then the third thing would, uh, third knife would be the Benchmade Pagan. A beautiful out the front with a with a nice curvy Coke bottle handle, a dagger blade uh, that's four inches long. So <sighs> automatic out the fronts, just like John Wick. I wish I could carry them every day, but I can't. <laughs> I'd put it in my boot. Well, I'd have to buy right. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Side opening automatics, Jim. So this is something I've been, uh, I have recently uh, gotten a new side op- uh, opening automatic and I've been carrying it around the house religiously because it is so incredibly awesome. Uh, and that was the, uh, the Protec TR3. And so that got me thinking about side opening automatics. And the next one I want to get, yes, to carry around the house is the Microtech LUDT. Uh, it's a, a classic design from Microtech, again, a famous name for automatic knives. And it's uh, it's basically classic Frogman switchblade for underwater demolition, you know, kind of thing I do on a sort of biweekly basis. Oh, yeah. All the yeah. Time. yeah. Yeah. So I better have one of those. So it, it's got a, a, a 3.4 inch drop point blade. It's just got a very cool design to me. It looks futuristic from a while ago. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not futuristic as we would depict it today, but futuristic as maybe it would be depicted, mm-hmm. say, 30 years ago. Okay. Um, uh, that's just me though. Uh, runner, runners up for the, for the side opening though. Cause, so this Microtech LUDT is, is way at the top and it also comes in the tactical and the bright colors. I would go for the tactical. I don't know, just to stay on theme. Uh, but runners up would be the Protech Brend 3. That is a four inch automatic knife. And now Walter Brend is a, is a, a, a sort of, uh, uh, well, he's a custom knife maker that has been, uh, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, hailed, uh, over the years. And, and this guy, uh, is, is so respected that he, he can still have as his logo, uh, the Confederate flag. So that's it. Boom. Confederate flag. Ooh. That's my logo. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, but, uh, I'm sure he means nothing by it. Uh, but that you will see that little tiny Confederate flag logo on the Microtech Brend 3, which is a sweet looking knife. Uh, I also like the Benchmade CLA and the Microtech Stitch again, which is a which is a uh, uh, a collaboration with uh, Borka knives. 
here's one of the the knife newbie questions coming out of me. Yeah. Um, automatic out the front and automatic side opening. Yes. Okay. You're, you're going to have to explain okay. explain that to me as so, a knife newbie. So right now we're talking about switch blades. Automatic side opening is what you know traditionally as uh, uh, like the Italian stiletto switch blade, like what James Dean was carrying in Rebel Without a Cause when he got in the knife fight up at the observatory. It's a it swings out. The blade swings out like a like a regular folding pocket knife. However, it locks open a and b. It's uh, sh it's deployed uh, with a, it's under spring tension and locked close. And when you press a button, it releases that spring tension and the blade flies open. Now, they have been illegal in many states for a long time. And now, as you know, uh, uh, with the efforts of Doug Ritter and knife rights, uh, a lot of those laws have changed in in many actually most states. But um, it, it, it is no faster than, say, a ball bearing pivot flipper or a, a $20 spring assisted Kershaw or an Emerson wave knife or a fixed blade. It just has a stigma because you press a button and there's a little machine that makes the blade fly open. It's stigmatized. But anyway, uh, uh, so, yeah, side opening automatic is a spring deployed button pushed hmm. uh, out the side knife. Okay. And then the out the front is what people used to call stilettos, uh, which is actually an incorrect term, but it's uh, basically a knife you, you, uh, that has an enclosed handle and a slot in the very front. You push forward an actuator or a lever and the blade flies out that slot, uh, flies out. It, it shoots right. out that slot right. uh, point first. It doesn't okay. swing out. It shoots out straight. Oh, okay. There, there used to be a misconception. I think it's, it's probably all but gone at this point, but that you could hold that, that knife up to someone and actuate the blade and it would shoot into you like a, like one of those <laughs> bolt guns you put down cattle with, but right. you know, it, it'll, it'll stop. Hmm. Uh, but most out the fronts are double action, which means you push the lever forward, the blade comes out. You pull the lever, lever back and the blade comes back in. Hmm. So it's got two different springs. Okay. Uh, there are some others that uh, you have to sort of reload by by pulling back on a mm. on a lever that like pulls kind the of cock it. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, but I, I like the idea of uh, the double action better. Mm -hmm. okay. More more cinematic. Well, you mentioned uh, Doug Ritter there and some of the legislative um, action and those kind of things. Uh, just uh, remind the listeners, uh, if you didn't catch episode 29, uh, Doug was on kind of giving a legislative update of some of the most recent action. You can hear that at thenivejunkie.com slash 29, thenivejunkie.com slash 29. And uh, give another little plug for the uh, Ultimate Steel fundraising giveaway, if you will. And uh, Doug Ritter talks about that on that episode as well. So sorry for the digression there with your explanation, your uh, your your good your good explanation for me. So I, I appreciate that. Well, that's perfect because uh, because because of Doug Ritter, uh, more and more and more people can carry these. It's mm. it's funny. Uh, just the, the raft of people I watch on YouTube who review knives uh, over the past couple of years, watching them add automatic knives to the knives they're reviewing on their channel as their states have been cleared of these ridiculous antiquated laws has been interesting. All right. So moving on. Yeah. Next category. Fixed so combat. Fixed fix combat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone knows I love cold steel and I love tops and, and some of my runners up are the cold steel tie pan. Classic. Beautiful. A uh, full-bellied dagger that I would love to have. Never, never pulled the trigger on that in the past twenty years. Tops, I love tops. You know that, but they are also on the uh, runners-up list with the top Ranger's Edge. I'm sort of a since it's combat, I'm thinking a couple of edges. So that's another dagger or the Spartan uh, knives, uh, Nix and and Spartan knives. Um, I, I've never held or used one. They're they're extremely high priced. So. Um, yeah. Maybe that's the reason I had never ever heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're cool. I mean they come out of a small shop for sure, but they're they're a little little rich for my blood, mm -hmm. um, and and it makes me think they must have some magical properties. Every everything about them is is sort of uh, Greek mythologically themed, so maybe there's mm -hmm. something to that. Uh, or the Chris Reeve Pacific Field knife, which is designed by Phil Harzi, who makes beautiful looking knives. Those are all cool, all runners up. But what I want to try. If I could just request any fixed combat uh, knife for Father's Day would be an RMJ tactical knife, uh, a jungle combat model. RMJ tactical is known for their amazing tomahawks and tactical uh, 
battle axes and what do you call it? Uh, war hammers and door breaching equipment that he was making originally uh, for uh, for service members only who are active duty when he when his capacity was smaller. And then as he grew, he's been able to uh, produce these amazing tomahawks and, and, and battle axes that are they're they're combat ready and they're actually made for soldiers to to bring into theater. Oh. But he's been able to produce these more and more. And recently, right. in the past couple of years, he's been getting into knives. Oh. And uh, so this one that I'm suggesting I'd like to try the RMJ Tactical Jungle Combat Knife is a beautiful six and a half inch Bowie. And it it sort of it it looks like uh, it's sort of a mix between a cowboy knife and a and a K bar with all oh. the with all the modern sort of accoutrement. So. Right. And I think it's a pretty thick slab, so it seems like it'd make a pretty cool knife. You're, you're dropping some names and some brands and those kind of things, again, that I, you know, I'm not familiar with, being the knife newbie, and that we you know, haven't talked about a lot here on the podcast or, or, or ever on the podcast. So it might be interesting to hear from our listeners mm-hmm. if they actually have any of these knives or have some experience with them or whatever. We'd love to get your feedback. Uh, you know, give us a call on the listener line at 724-466-4487. Please leave us a message on that listener line. That's what it's set up for, for you to leave a comment, leave a question. Uh, if you're, if you actually own one of these knives that Bob is, is on his uh, fantasy Father's Day knife list, um, you know, Call and give us a quick one or two minute little review about the knife. We'd love to uh, play it back on an upcoming podcast and, yeah. uh, you know, maybe that would even uh, lead to uh, a future gift uh, for the knife junkie or whatever. Jeez. But uh, love to, love to hear from you if you've got any experience with any of these knives, Bob, that you're that you're kind of going through. And Jim, it's funny you should say that because this next knife, the fixed uh, camp knife, I know for a fact one of our listeners, uh, one of our our biggest and oldest fans, Cabin Man, has mm, yeah. Um, and uh, actually, he recently had this knife up for sale. Uh, and I, I just didn't have the money to pick it up at the time. But this is the Bark River Shining Mountain Bowie. It's a beautiful, big camp bowie, camp everything bowie. And and the, the profile of the blade is exactly that of the knife carried by Brad Pitt in the Quentin Tarantino movie Inglorious Bastards, which is has a lot of fantastic bowie knife scenes. Let me just mm. say that. Same blade profile, and I would get it the way he had it in the movie with a big stag antler handle. Right. You know, if we're gonna if this if we're gonna be fancy right. about, if we're it. gonna do it. Go all the way, man. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if Cabin Man sold off his Bark River Shining Mountain Bowie, uh, but if if he doesn't, I don't know. There might be a future for me with it. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't commit. Runners up in this category: the Tops to home a field knife and the Cold Steel Recon Scout. Uh, next, slip joints. Jim, you know I'm a big fan of slip joints, right. and I know you think that my answer is going to be a Great Eastern Cutlery slip joint. Uh, you know, Bob, at this point in the show, <laughs> I can't begin to think what you're thinking, so yeah. Yeah, uh, but it isn't in this case. In this case, it's the new Chris Reeve Knives Impinda. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I believe Epic Snuggle Bunny was carrying it uh, when we spoke with him, and he, he spoke uh, very highly of this knife. It is a beautiful slip jointy. I think uh, Chris Reeve did a little bit of uh, noodling with the mechanism, so it's not exactly the, your your grandfather's slip joint, uh, but it is a uh, a slip joint with with some of the hallmarks of uh, modern folding knives. Some of the materials, titanium. It looks kind of like a modern folding knife, but then you see the the nail nick, and uh, it is just beautiful and. Judging by the only other Chris Reeve knife, knife I have experience with my my own personal uh, large Sabenza twenty one, it's got to be built just like, I don't know, I don't want to say it, I don't want to say okay a tank, all right I hate it but it's it must be this beautiful little thing must be built so tough, all right. just judging from the other things so that would be my first choice second choice would be the very large and new uh, Great Eastern Cutlery number ninety seven can't get away from that it's a large no. uh, clip point. Single, GEC, uh, GEC snuck in there, didn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's the ADV. That's on Andre De Villiers. He's a he's a custom knife maker who who does small runs of uh, mid tech stuff. But his mini pocket butcher uh, would be sweet to have. And then of course Elijah Isham Black Star. I love that knife. 
Okay. So, yeah, I remember you guys talked about that. Yeah. yeah. And I also told him, I, I hinted that he should <laughs> <laughs> create a large fixed blade version of that because the blade on the Black Star would make a seriously cool and menacing Bowie knife. And maybe he'd have to call it, you know, the knife junkie something or another. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he could call it the, the De Marceau. Well, you, you mentioned uh, Elijah Isham. He was on episode 26, and yeah. uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny was uh, episode uh, 18, 18, I believe. I yeah. So uh, Interesting guys. Back. All of these people, and, and uh, hopefully I speak to some women uh, in, in, in the future too, but all of these guys who are into knives, they all come at it from different angles. Just interesting, yeah, ones, yeah. interesting people. Not only different uh, backgrounds coming into it, but, yeah, as you say, different perspectives on – the collecting, the making, the reviewing, because we, we, you've talked to all different types of folks, you know, knife makers, designers, knife reviewers, knife collectors. I mean, you know, knife users. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you cover yeah. the gamut. So, yeah, it's it's a great, just a great, well, well-rounded um, perspective, I guess, that, that, that you're getting. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the questions recently that has been the most interesting uh, for me to hear the answer of uh, has to do with aesthetics. How how much the look of it has to do with how successful oh. a designer or a maker thinks their knife is? Because I, I've I've come to realize how much it is about the look and feel of a knife, the aesthetics of of the knife, and the ergonomics right. of the knife that really keep me with it, that draw me to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. It's interesting to find out uh, the person who actually produces it, how much of that goes into the production of it. Well, you know, as a newbie and a, a novice collector, if you will, that's what I would be looking at. I, not necessarily the function, I think, as you call it, but, you know, the design, the look, the aesthetics, you know. I like you mentioned earlier colors, you know, the colors of the knives right. and the handle materials. That's that's kind of what intrigues me about it. And and that's part and parcel of of how you would be using it, mm -hmm. uh, whether, you, you know, I, I am a very light user. I have some very uh, high speed, low drag, hardcore knives. Uh, but, you know, there, it's to remove it. It's to cut my sandwich in half or to remove <laughs> a thread off my cut. I do very little, uh, you know, tough, knife stuff there, yeah. tough stuff in my in my day to day. So cardboard better watch out. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> cutting you up into so many small pieces. Well, that's right. They're never going to be able to reclaim you. So two two more. Yeah, I was going to ask, what's what's next on the, let's make sure I get this right, the Fantasy Father's Day knife list. So second to last uh, is the machete category. And um, let me let me just say this. You're just so excited you can't get the words well, out. <laughs> well, what I would order, what, what I would ask for would be the, the Condor Perrin machete, which oh. is made by Condor Knives in, in El Salvador. And they make incredible, uh, somewhat rustic, uh, knives and this, uh, they make a lot of machetes. And this parang machete is a really beautiful interpretation of the, of the classic sort of uh, uh, Indonesian parang knife. Uh, and and I love the way it looks. So since this is all about fantasy, I would get that. But if 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 it's about having a working machete to do machete work. Sounds funny. I would I would get the Ontario. I always talk about that. Just the straight up Ontario machete that they they give to army, you know, the army guys. All right. The same one I got in 1985 from the uh, from the U.S. Uh, from the Army Navy surplus store because I know from firsthand experience the thing could just go through anything. Well, that's in that's interesting. I think that's the the first one that you've kind of covered on this list so far that you would have like two two choices depending on what you were going to use it for. So that's that's interesting. Yeah, I kind of know that that uh, since I already have the Ontario, I, I I'm I'm sort of breaking my own rule of the game. Uh, I already have it, but but I have to say, if anyone's listening and they really want to get a machete for someone. Yeah, that Ontario, just like the straight up Ontario uh, South American style machete is just mm -hmm. it's awesome. OK, uh, but but I do have some runner ups. The Cold Steel Barong machete uh, with, with the traditional style handle. So cool. Uh, and the uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool, a name you don't hear too much here. Uh, their Chance in Hell machete. They have an 18 inch. It's called Chance <laughs> in Hell. All I one love word. that name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is just a good looking machete has got a super ergonomic looking handle which love it or hate it I don't, I don't know i don't know sometimes i think a neutral handle is better especially with a hard working knife like that but uh that would be my those would be my runners up and then and then custom knives jim 
And if I'm going to go for a custom knife, I, I'm not going to touch the fixed blade knives yet. That will be a, another time. I'm going to veer away. I'm going to stay away from custom fixed blades right now because it's a, a huge field and, I, and uh, my knowledge is limited. So I'm going to stick to custom folding knives. And I'm going to have to say that it would be anything by Tough Knives. Jeff Blauvelt. I love his knives, as you know from my gushing interview with him. They're just uh, they're just really gorgeous. They have a, a very nice uh, the, the lines are elegant. They look beautiful, um, and I don't know. He just his taste level is right on, right on for me. Um, and then on the other end of the of the taste level, uh, runner up would be Todd Begg, whose whose knives are like so ornate, uh, but the uh, the field. The field grade bodega is beautiful. And then another runner up would be Peter Rosenti. Uh, anything by him. Mm. Love the Nirvana. Uh, but but uh, my custom knife choice would be uh, something from Tough Knives. So again, Bob has been uh, taking a look at his uh, fantasy Father's Day knife list. If money was no object, a uh, bunch of different categories here. And uh, another caveat, these are production knives that the knife junkie doesn't already own. So, you know, maybe your fantasy Father's Day knife list would be much different than than Bob's, but, uh, you know, that's fine. Everybody, everybody would have their fantasy Father's Day knife list. What's on your fantasy Father's Day knife list as Dad's Day is coming up? Give us a call on the listener line and let us know, 724-466-4487. Please, we want to hear from you. We We don't just throw this number out there to, you know, say we've got a phone number, but, you know, we really, truly want you to call and leave us some comments. So 724-466-4487, what's on your fantasy Father's Day knife list? Or if, again, as I said earlier, if you own any of these knives that Bob uh, doesn't and has, has put on his list that he wants, uh, call and let us know what you like about it or maybe what you don't. And maybe it'll continue to be on Bob's list or maybe go off of his list. But anyway, yeah, love to hear from you. Uh, or you could call and let us know what knife you got for Father's Day or what oh. color the tie shirt combination that you actually got is. <laughs> oh, that's a low blow, Bob. <laughs> the tie. Oh, thanks. Got. Oh, thanks, baby. This I love great. it. Matches my socks that I'm I got really for I'm kill it in that meeting. <laughs> Well, again, reminder that uh, Dad's Day is coming up, so uh, hopefully it's a, it's a good one and uh, you get some knives or a knife or something knife-related to uh, to make it a happy Father's Day. Interesting um, list there, Bob, and again, a lot of um, knives and, and some designers, makers that, you know, I haven't heard of, I'm not familiar with, so that was, that was kind of eye-opening for me. Well, uh, let me just tell you, uh, b- before we sign off, I always get my dad a knife for Father's Day. And oh. uh, it just occurred to me, I'm, I, I, it's, it's coming to me, the different knives I've gotten him. I've gotten him a lot of Spydercos over the years. Hmm. Got him a Spyderco Native 5, all steel, a few years ago. Uh, I got him a, um, uh, a, a GEC, I mean, I'm sorry, a Case Doctor's Knife, because he's a doctor, and I figured that'd be a cool thing. And then I recently got him the Spyderco Patata, because uh, we're of Italian uh, ethnic extraction, and the patata is a classic Italian knife. Uh, mm. He's also got a Spyderco military. He's got a cold steel uh, that he bought himself. He's got some other cool stuff. My dad's a happening man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's always appreciated. Yeah. Interesting kind of pre-show discussion we had. We were kind of looking at all these knives and the fantasy list and all that, and you kind of touched on it a little bit during your discussion about, I uh, forget which knife, but talking about the uh, the colors of the knife and the handles mm-hmm. and, and that type of thing and kind of what makes it collectible. You know, that's kind of a, a personal thing, you know, what, what makes it a, a collectible item and what makes it worthy of adding to your own collection. Uh, uh-huh. That's going to be a topic we're going to kind of get into in a, in a future show to talk about this yeah. philosophy of collecting, if you will. Yeah, well, I think um, you know manufacturers and designers are smart. They they hit upon uh, a design that really resonates with the with the knife buying public. Let's just say, for instance, the Spyderco Paramilitary too. It's ubiquitous. It has gone through so many different. Uh, 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 configurations, whether it's uh, manu- uh, uh, whether it's purveyor um, exclusives like the Blade HQ exclusive or the you know, DLT knives exclusive, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or manufacturer sprint versions with different steels and different handle colors. 
they get a design that people like and they just keep putting it out in different steels. You need it in M4. You need it with the green handle, you know, and you need it in red, you need it in blue, you need it in black, you need it in tan. Yeah. You need it in stripes, you need it in polka dots. You need it in one of those little airplane bottles. You need it in a little flask. You need it in a fifth behind your bar. You need a giant magnum of it. It's, you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's dealing with the, uh, you know, it's locking on to what hooks people. Right. Well, and if if you are a true collector, you bite on that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I agree. I've got to have that one and that one and that one. The ones who have mastered it for all time, case knives. Mm. Case knives. They have, uh, I don't know, say on the outside, 12 to 20 different patterns uh, at most. But they have a, a, a smaller grouping of traditional knife patterns that they produce in mass. And every year they come out with a couple of different cover materials. This year it's going to be, uh, you know, blue camel bone. And then everything is in that and a couple of different colors. And people keep buying the same knife. They mm. keep buying that trapper knife, but they could buy it in this year's handle cover. Right. Uh, and um, I totally get the impulse of the buyer, and I totally get the impulse uh, or the uh, the instinct of the of the manufacturer to do right. that. Why, right. why, why, why disturb that beautiful trap? Right. <laughs> it's a business plan that's working. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you that type of collector? Do you have to have you know X knife in you know? 28 different variations? I, I, I feel like I could be mm-hmm. if uh, if money were no issue. Uh, I have a couple of doubles. I have a few hinderers uh, because I, I'm the type of person who will buy it with the different blades. Mm-hmm. I'm not so into buying it in the different blade steels. Uh, I have two Yojimbo 2s be, just because I like the, the way they look and the and the steel combinations. Mm-hmm. But, but um, mostly, no. I am someone who collects uh, on design. So I'll buy a Boker, even though I'm not a big Boker fan. I'll buy a Boker because it's the Boker Squail, and it is uh, a, a design by a designer, uh, Marlowe, whose knives I could never afford. So the way I can get mm. one of his knives is to buy a Boker. So I'm more design-oriented. Interesting. All right. Well, pretty uh, pretty cool show, uh, Bob. Thanks for your uh, your fantasy Father's Day knife list. Again, production knives that the knife junkie doesn't own and money is no object. So, you know, Mrs. Knife Junkie or fans, followers or whatever, if you want to buy the knife junkie a, a knife, there you go. There's his list of, what, 50 knives, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'll take any one of them. <laughs> I'm sure you would. And, Sweetheart. And, and even one that's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. Bob, uh, wrapping it up here, I uh, want to remind folks that uh, today's podcast has been brought to you by Audible. If you're a Knife Junkie listener and you like audio like Bob and I do, we encourage you to get a free audiobook download along with your 30-day free trial just by going to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or even an MP3 player. Again, Free audiobook download, 30-day free trial. All you have to do is uh, go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Final thoughts, Bob, from the knife junkie as we wrap up episode number 33 of the podcast. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm not just saying this because I'm, you know, an obsessive about this. But really, you know, when you think of fathers and the roles they play, uh, one of those uh, traditional roles fathers play is teaching a self-reliance. And the ability to do things by yourself until you really need to ask for help. And one way you can ensure that you can be self-reliant is to have the basic tools for life on you. And one of those things is a pocket knife. So I think it makes a great gift for a, a father. Or for your son. Or for your son. On Son's Day, which is every other day of the year, right? That's, that's right. My <laughs> son, my son's birthday is, is uh, right around Father's Day. And whenever I say something about Father's Day, he's like, oh, Dad, it's my birthday. And I'm like, okay, yeah, right. So, <laughs> yeah, well. so, so I get no respect. I'm like, oh, you your fit. let me tell you, let me tell you. Anyway, <laughs> All right. For Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim the Knife Newbie Person. Thanks again for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. 
Check out some great knife photos on the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at the knifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487. And you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. 